Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 22 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 92 today for the Dutch Grand Prix in Season 6. If you guys did miss the previous episode at the Austrian Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out. Before you see this one, it was going so well around the Red Bull ring. The sprint race were able to get some really good points on Fernando Alonso. Had a tougher time over the weekend in qualifying, being out outside of the points paying positions but Sunday's Grand Prix came crashing down to a familiar end as we suffered our second engine failure of the season and it's our third no points finish in a row of course with Monaco being crashed out by the championship leader Fernando Alonso and it was our internal combustion engine again no other components had a failure just the actual ICE itself so we're down to one ICE, the original one we had in the car from the get-go at the start of the season. So we're going to run that part in this Grand Prix because Zandvoort definitely is in a place where you want to take a penalty. It's very difficult to overtake, very tight, you know, fast, fast circuit, but tight as well in terms of where the outlines of the circuit are and sometimes very difficult to make passes, especially with such a tight pack with maxed out cars. So we're going to save what is going to be an inevitable uh, engine penalty at this kind of you know, third of the way through the season to the halfway point, we're going to have to take a penalty at some point because we can't simply run one internal combustion engine for the rest of the season over like 60%. It's not going to be ideal in terms of the power levels. And we really need this to be a good Grand Prix for us. We have to, have to bounce back. Of course, there is always the worry that another engine issue is going to face us. We're not, you know, strangers to that. It happened to us in season four where we had so many in one single season but um you, you gotta kind of put those, those thoughts aside and just go into the race weekend thinking the car's gonna be fine so let's go out there and maximize the position in qualifying and in the race then and uh, yeah ideally we need to bounce back because it's three races no points Alonso, yeah, he got a few points taken off him last episode, I guess, but he's still got a pretty commanding lead in the Drivers' Championship due to his consistency beforehand, and the win at Monaco also really bagged him a lot of points on a lot of us, really. And also, for me, internally, with this Ferrari team, Verstappen now has two wins under his belt. You know, as I alluded to at the end of last episode, it's a bit funny how both those wins have come in the same race where I faced an engine failure, but I digress. He's now got two wins to my one in that opening round. So in terms of the inter-team battle and trying to, you know, keep up pace with Verstappen, it looks like he's heating up and we're seeing the Verstappen of old, the real Verstappen, come through for the first time here in this Scarlet car. So we need to really pull up our socks and show what's what. But uh, it's going to be difficult. Zanvor, always a difficult race versus the AI and Verstappen's uh, home race. So he's going to be raring to go. But Lando Norris looking pretty damn quick as well up there in P1 in Q1. Unfortunately, Sebastian Vettel can't say the same thing for him as he was knocked out in Q1, facing a few little struggles. You know, we've seen some glimpses of, uh, you know, the old Sebastian Vettel that we've seen in previous, you know, races in this series. The, the man who won two extra world championships to become a six-time world champion in this alternate F1 universe. But definitely, you're also seeing at the same time, equally, a number of points where Vettel is showing Showing maybe his age in the game where he's switching off and not having the same performance as Felipe Dragovic. But for us, we can't, uh, you know, we can't even think about the, 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 the idea of switching off in the cockpit. We need to extract the time out of the car, even though it's difficult. I've always found Zandvoort difficult. I feel like the AI carry so much speed mid-corner in Sector 2. Like some of these corners, they get on the power so early or just are able to carry so much more speed through them versus myself, but we need to find the time somewhere. We're picking up a decent chunk in sector three, and we're going to gain just under four tenths of a second on this third flying lap in Q2. It took three 
flying laps to get us in to the top 10 shootout because we were on the cusp of being knocked out there and we definitely needed that last lap to get us in and book us in for the top 10 shootout. Verstappen, no surprise up there in front of his home crowd. Both Audis looking strong. Leclerc drags the Mercedes up along with Fernando Alonso as Aston Martin. Oh, well, I guess all the Mercedes powered cars struggling a bit more because you know, you've know you only got one Merc in there, one Aston, one McLaren, one Williams car in there. So I think definitely you're seeing track to track. There are some struggles now maybe for those kind of teams and ourselves at Ferrari and Audi, we're coming strong at these races. But of course, we didn't make the most of it. Austria, Verstappen did. I didn't. So let's see what we can do now in Q3. But I'm getting the sense that Verstappen in front of his home crowd is going to be very strong around here. So this is, you know, we're in the lion's den. This is going to be difficult for us to get one over him. At the moment, first flying lap, we actually do get one over him, but it's a pretty slow lap from both of us. Dragovic going quickest, Sainz then as well, Alonso up there in P3. So on this second flyer, it's at the end of the session. Myself and Verstappen are down in P5 and 6. Both of us haven't set a particularly great lap time, but surprised that Verstappen hasn't got the lap in. Magnussen even goes quicker than him right now. And the Williams on the top left there. Alonso, the championship leader, ahead of all of us in P3. Schwartz in between in P4, so this needs to be a good lap from myself. I'm sure Verstappen is behind us somewhere or ahead of us on his flyer as well, looking to catapult himself up the order. But at the moment, this would be quite big for us versus our teammate. Oh, God! That curb spat us out like nothing. And in a flash, our Q3 is over as uh, cars come through yellow flags. The session won't be red flag. There's no mechanics for that. But in real life, that's what happened, uh, if you remember, when Perez span at the banking. But Lando Norris will grab a pole position in the Audi then. Verstappen's down in P10, but he's still on his flyer. And he'll go up the order. It's not pole position, but it's the front row for him alongside Lando Norris. But potentially, we may have even slowed him up maybe with the yellows and he uh, lost pole position but for us it's down in p9 bitter disappointment uh only saving grace is alonso's in p7 only only two positions ahead of us but versus verstappen that is so frustrating the spin has cost us there and now we've got it all to do so many quick cars ahead of us and it seems like we don't have the same pace as verstappen completely to maybe challenge so this might be a difficult one to bounce back from Welcome along then to the North Sea coast and to the Zandvoort circuit. We're 25 miles away from Amsterdam for today's Dutch Grand Prix. It's a race the great Jim Clark won on four occasions, leading for an astonishing total of 370 laps. Zandvoort circuit then, 14 corners, 10 to the right and four to the left, with plenty of steep camber and elevation changes to keep our drivers on their toes throughout the 2.6 mile lap. And watch out for cars making use of the DRS zone into turn one to attempt an overtake. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lando Norris put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Sainz, Drogovic, Robert Schwartzman, and Leclerc. Fernando Alonso, Gasly, the owner driver, and Kevin Magnussen, Albon, Bottas, Mick Schumacher, and Sonoda, Hulkenberg, Oscar Piastri, Sebastian Vettel, and Liam Lawson, Perez, Russell, Ricardo, and Esteban Ocon lines up at the back of the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Alongside me to discuss all the action today is Natalie Pinkham. Thanks for joining us, Natalie. And tell me, you were down in the pit lane earlier. How do you think the track conditions are today? Well, it's looking a bit cold out there, if I'm honest. These tyres have quite a narrow operating window in terms of the temperatures they need to extract the best grip. So with the cold track surface, it's going to be harder to keep those temperatures up, which will lead to lower grip and maybe more mistakes. So a potential difficult race ahead of us means we're going to have to try something a little bit different to everyone else. And we're starting on the medium compound attire. Surprised, to be honest, that everyone 
barring the pole sitter Lando Norris has started on softs. It's only myself and Lando that have gone onto the mediums, a fresh set of mediums, because that's why I'm surprised, because no one should really have a fresh set of softs inside the top 10. Outside the top 10, I can understand, but those ahead of me, in between myself and the pole man, those softs are already going to have at least three laps gone into them. One flying lap, one in lap and an out lap. So surprised, to be honest, that not uh, uh, more people have gone for mediums. But yeah, myself and Lando going for mediums. I'm going for the longer strategy of stretching these mediums. And then potentially, if I feel like we can, stretching them enough to go on to a new set of softs at the end of the race where we're on lower fuel. So the degradation is going to be a little bit less. Whereas now, you know, at the moment at the start of this race on heavy low fuel loads, that's why I'm surprised so many have gone on softs because those soft tyres are going to start to wear out quite a fair bit just because of the extra kg on these cars. Um, I don't know what Lando's going to do. Potentially the same thing as me or he might go to the hard tyres. I don't know if Audi are worried about their tyre wear, but I felt the need to do something different in our cockpit. So here we go in the lion's den. The Staffan's home race. He's on the front row. We go to five red lights from P9 on the grid. Lights out and we're underway for this Dutch Grand Prix. And it's going to be a very difficult turn one to navigate. We've not had the best exit off the lights, of course, on a slower compound attire. Someone's clearly made contact into turn one, though, as there was a bit of carbon fibre that spewed off. We're actually down to P10 because Kevin Magnussen has finished that overtake and kept the position through the first turn. And the Williams has jumped me, but he's on to having a go at Fernando Alonso, the championship leader, the man that we've been trying to aim for this entire time with that consistency and we're just within closing distance of him, but Magnussen gets the better of me and keeps ahead. So we've got to legitimately re-overtake this Williams car who's looking quicker than us on the softs. A lot of cars are looking quicker than us on the softs initially with Albon even having a go at us on the inside there. Oh, a waft of oversteer as the heavy rear end kicks out but ahead of us Leclerc he is going slow and slowing everyone up behind him because he's got damage he was the culprit that lost a bit of carbon fiber surprise surprise at turn one it's been a torrid season of horrendous luck and performance for Mercedes after coming well they're the closest team that gave us a run for the money in the championship last season in the constructors and the drivers championship this season they've fallen off a cliff Russell's already last place Leclerc in the pits and and we've just made a gargantuan dive bomb on Magnussen to get up into PA. That was so late from so far back. But such is the desperation to get a move on. And basically just saying, no, I'm not getting stuck behind a Williams for any longer. Big old dive bomb. Got the move done. But this is the replay then of what happened to Leclerc. And, uh, well, it's just a bit of uh, carelessness, I think, from the man in the Mercedes car. He just locks up and goes straight to the side of Felipe Dragovic in the AAR car. And uh, he's lost his end plate. And simply put, that's going to put him in the pit. So Russell was already in last place at this point in the race. So both Mercedes cars towards the back. Maybe Leclerc can go long on hards and salvage something from this race, but it's going to be a long old afternoon for him. Quite the opposite for this man that we're focused on right now, though. On the beginning of lap three, Lando Norris from pole position still leading the way on the mediums, which, you know, in about 10 laps time will be the better race tyre. Those softs, they're probably going to come in around lap 11 to 12. So, you know, even in a couple of laps, those mediums will be the better race tyre, I feel. So he'll keep his advantage at the front. And for us, as we focus back on where we are in P8 there, looking to stick with Fernando Alonso, hoping that these mediums start to rubber in and give us the advantage, and already maybe that's the case, because there was a little bit of a wobble from Fernando through the banking on the exit curb, so we're going to try and go for a move, he goes defensive ahead of us, Gasly trying to overtake Schwartzman, so it's two by two through the exit at turn one, Alonso still there on the inside, but we're going to squeeze him out, and Gasly is going to get shoved off the racing line by Schwartzman as he gets his elbows out so the McLaren stays put in P6 we've overtaken the championship leader Alonso but the work doesn't stop there because my teammate is all the way up in P2 trying to vie for the lead so we've got plenty of positions to go to try and bridge that gap to our teammate and you're very clearly the Astins and all the Mercedes powered cars are struggling a little bit this weekend so we need to make the most of this and try and clear these two cars I mean Schwartzman powered by the Ferrari in the 
Repsol Ascar, but we need to clear both of them. They're, you know, not, I wouldn't normally think they're going to be a, an issue for us, but Alonso's found it tough to get past them. He's stuck behind, so if we can pass them before Alonso has a chance to have a go at us to re-overtake us, that would be ideal, because then we've just got a couple of more cars taking points off him and uh, giving us a bit of a buffer then to chase after the top four. Plenty of clean air ahead of Schwartzman, but first of all, we need to get past Pierre Gasly, who goes very defensive. Yellow flags up at turn one. A car's off. It's Lando Norris. Oh no, the man who's leading the Grand Prix has made an error and he's now going slow down the order and all of a sudden that will put Max Verstappen up into the lead of this race, but we're, we're the, the racing for us is not finished because we're still trying to finish this move on Gasly and it's turning into a tantalizingly close battle here as we send it down the inside of this fast right hander undulating up and down in sector two and we get the move eventually finished off in p5 but that was mighty fine there was so many points where we we're pretty much maybe a millimeter away from making contact with Gasly either on our side or our nose cone to his gearbox but we've got the McLaren but a uh, huge huge moment for the race order as Lando Norris has well made some sort of error maybe he got pushed wide by Verstappen I don't know because he was on the outside of the circuit so well could be the fact that maybe Max has gone down the inside classic Verstappen kind of move got the elbows out and squeezed him completely off the road potentially I don't know but Verstappen now leads his home Grand Prix so that's even more worrying to be honest for me and the likes of everyone because you know he'll be so determined to get this race win in front of the home crowd having come off a race win at Austria as well so he's got that momentum that focus for the AI in, in him but right now at the moment we need to try and get past Schwarzman and we're gonna try on the left not gonna work we're gonna switch to the right and try a copycat move like the one we made on the McLaren just the lap before and get Schwarzman just before that right hander going towards sector three up into P4 for the first time in this race and now about 3.5 seconds of clean air to chase after these three but they're looking mighty fast and there is Max Verstappen leading the way in his home race in a Ferrari though not a Red Bull this time but this is uh, well prime Verstappen position to be able to control the race for the rest of this Grand Prix but uh, let's see if Sainz can do anything about it the Audi seem to have some really great pace since the last episode they've maybe got a bit more momentum back with the team energy in the team Sainz on the outside Verstappen goes a little bit defensive but uh, to be honest didn't have to defend that much from him to keep P1 but this is a replay then of what what happened to Lando Norris and it, oh it's just a it's just a spin it's just a spin it's just a mistake by Lando's AI we saw plenty of those at Austria but the difference was that was in the wet conditions in intermediates that is just a flat out really rookie error there from Lando Norris in the Audi so he's now down behind Albon I think just about in P10 as we see Mick Schumacher make an overtake on the Repsol Haas through that uh, carousel. Yeah, so the Orlando going back to the live action is in P10. He's going to try and change that and get up into P9 versus his old teammate at Red Bull from last season. This might be awkward. He left the Red Bull team after one season of poor performance and he's now in an Audi that seems to be working a lot better for him as he's up into P9 and on the mediums. He could probably still recover quite well, I, th I think, to be honest. But uh, for us in the cockpit, lap 10, looking to try and bridge this gap to the top three and around now this is where the crossover is for the medium tyre being the better compound at this stage of the race versus the softs. You can see the top three in the minimap, they're all bunched up and they've been losing time to each other with dirty air and so by the end of lap 11 on to 12 we've closed up and we've got DRS for the first time on Felipe Drogovic. We're gaining we've not got too much battery left we set a fast up of the Grand Prix but I don't send one down the inside of Drogovic as we did versus the Williams because unlike the Williams I know Drogovic will put up a fight. I mean you remember back to the end of season 
season five, how aggressive Drogovic was in his defensive work around Abu Dhabi. And, uh, you know, with a history with the driver, of course, not wanting to risk anything. At this stage also, I know they're going to be coming in pretty darn soon. And it's actually going to be this next lap on to lap 13. They all come into the pits and all of a sudden we're up into P1 of the Dutch GP. But we've got a long way to go. And of course, we're trying to stretch these mediums as long as they can go. We, you know, if the softs went about the 12 laps on heavy fuel we need to go to about lap 23 and then pit onto softs if we are going to go onto softs and then I don't know what Norris is going to do but he's now into P2 as well eight seconds back from me and then in terms of where these guys come out the Stappen comes out in relatively clean air but Sainz comes out just behind Piastri and ahead of George Russell so that's not great company for Sainz so that's going to give the Stappen some breathing room Drogovic behind uh, Russell and Lawson so Verstappen's actually going to come out looking pretty good there with a lot of breathing room with the, the two people chasing him uh, with uh, cars to pass as, uh, oh, we nearly have a little moment through the right-hander and now there's yellow flags on lap 16, a couple of laps out from our pit stop, you know, about uh, seven to go until we made a pit stop. But now the safety car has come out and this changes everything. Because, as I said, we had about maybe, yeah, seven laps to go until we were going to make our first pit stop for this Grand Prix. But now, this safety car could change everything for myself and Lando Norris. And this is why it's a horrendous collision between Magnussen and Leclerc. I think Leclerc was uh, having an engine failure of his own. And Magnussen just uh, misjudges it on the straight. I think he was pulling out for, uh, to try and maybe make a move on the Haas or something or other, but he's just driven straight into the Willy, uh, to the Mercedes car. And Leclerc parks up, ironically, at Turn 1 anyway, with his engine going up in smoke. So, uh, bad day in the office for both those drivers, but horrendous for Leclerc, really, considering where he was. But... Yeah, so that's why the safety car's out, because they're pretty dangerous to have a car sideways on at a very tight, narrow main straight. So under the safety car, we come in, Norris will come in as well, and so this is effectively a free pit stop for myself and Lando Norris. So this safety car is playing right into our hands, because we're going to come out the pit exit. It'll be quite close. Look at the mini-map. That's where Verstappen is, but we're going to come out just ahead of our teammate Max Verstappen and keep the lead, keep the lead of the Dutch GP. We have finessed the top three. We've overtaken Verstappen, Sainz and Drogovic in one pit stop thanks to the safety car. And you just know, you know, at his home race especially as well, since he was leading, he was looking good versus the traffic that Sainz and Drogovic had, Verstappen is going to be so peeved off at that bad luck there. That's got us ahead in P1. And now Norris also is there in P5. And he's right up, up there, up there. So he's recovered from that spin, basically, and we'll have a chance to have a go. But right now, it's a bit nervy on this restart because, because we've got so long to go. There's no way myself or Lando could go on softs. So you'll notice both myself and Norris are on hard tyres. So I'm trying to desperately get some heat into these hards. And the safety car came in so slow, it didn't let me do any burnout before the banking. So I'm going to actually weave around on the main straight and wait right until the last minute, the, the, the kind of you know, checkered line on the main straight for the new lap to get going, because that's where officially you can overtake the cars. And we get going then, and we have caught up Verstappen a little bit. We go defensive. Verstappen goes on the outside, but he's a bit wide himself, and he makes a correction, and he makes an error there in judgment with his steering wheel because he's lost two positions in a flash and all of a sudden his race has gone from bad to worse in terms of he was leading down to P2 now down to P4 in one corner signs up into P2 Dragovic P3 and this is why so this is the weaving then we kind of jumped him and actually got we caught him off guard a little bit but then on the mediums of course he has the better grip tries to go around the outside we don't really even defend him that much it's actually just that correction I don't know if his rear end was going and stepping out but that little correction steering left through the right-hander, that basically just lost him all the momentum in the world and allowed Dragovic and Sainz to get back through. And so now the race order is myself from Sainz 
Drogovic, Verstappen, Lando Norris is the top five. Alonso still down there in P7. Is now Sainz is having a go at it though. On the medium tyres on lap 23. He goes to the inside. We squeezed him towards the apex to try and tighten up his line. And we've done very well indeed to defend against him to maintain P1. And oh, big lock up from Drogovic in the carousel. And Verstappen now pounces and gets back up into P3. Well, I think you can clearly see at the moment on the hard tyres. We are so much slower than these medium tyre runners and Sainz comes in for the kamikaze dive bomb at the chicane. We had to take avoiding action because if I kept my uh, racing line and my nose turning to the apex that would have been an almighty crash with Carlos Sainz because he literally cut the kerb I think to make that move so a little bit of a questionable move there from the Spaniard but yeah these medium tyres are clearly right now the quicker tyre but we're going to come back at Carlos Sainz and unlike pre Previously versus Drogovic, I will have the confidence to dive him back because I'm desperate to keep this lead. And in doing so, we've actually helped out Verstappen because he's up into P2. Sainz gets him back though. And in Sector 3, the same place where he tried it last time, Verstappen now is the one diving down. He's made contact with Sainz. And I think I can just about see, I think there's damage. I think Verstappen's made uh, contact with Sainz and he's struggling for front end grip there. And Verstappen is through and has actually booked in finally that P2 and Sainz comes in. Controversy. Verstappen and Sainz make contact and the Audi pits where it's his teammate on the hards span out uh, out of first place earlier on in the race. Now goes round the outside of Felipe Drogovic to get into P3 in this Grand Prix. It's Fernando Alonso. The wily old fox just sneaks by down the inside of Pierre Gasly and almost actually tries to have a go at the Brazilian in the AAR car for P4 but it's going to be P5 then for Alonso but good stuff for him to get that one position to limit the damage in terms of the championship points versus ourselves Verstappen, Drogovic ahead of him but yeah yeah. So the, the story of the race now is lap 28, we had a bit of breathing room to Verstappen, but he's brought it back down under one second. So we've got to try and keep our cool on hard tyres and try and keep this lead. But as we go on through the laps, those mediums will start to wear out and they'll be the slower race tyre. So we've just got to keep it cool. And that's exactly what we do because we're now on lap 33. And this entire time, Verstappen's been right underneath my rear wing at turn one, you know, closing it to three tenths. We build the gap to five tenths. It comes back down to three tenths. So it's a real mental kind of game. It's staying concentrated. But Verstappen is as close as he's ever been now at the end of lap 34. Two tenths behind me. And Norris is also there in the Audi. The Ferrari pulls to the right. The Audi on the left. It's nearly three one going into that chicane and through all of that Lando Norris has managed to get P2 and break the 1-2 for this Ferrari team so we're going to be a good teammate as much as it's risky because we're risking our first place I want to try and get us the 1-2 if Verstappen can't win I at least want him to get P2 as a consolation Norris comes through on the outside we're on the inside and we're just going to get the elbow out to take him wide and Verstappen comes through and in the same way that where Verstappen Verstappen lost that position, remember, where it was snapping at the steering wheel. You saw there maybe the Audi did that snap on the steering wheel where his rear, uh, rear end came out. So literally carbon copy there, the way that Verstappen lost his position earlier in the race. But he's been able to get into P2 and now we'll go to the last lap of the Grand Prix. We've kept it cool. We've channeled those vibes from last season where we're so determined and just remaining calm and doing everything we need to do to keep this controlled. Verstappen almost loses P2 on the last lap there because Lando has a little nip at his heels but the Audi is going to have to settle for P3 because Verstappen's in P2 and here we come through the final banking in P1 it's going to be our second win for Ferrari four wins in total for this scooter here maybe times are changing because it's Forza Ferrari come on 1-2. I think this is the first 1-2 they've maybe got since like season 1, maybe in this series. Absolutely amazing stuff. 1-2. It is our time to bathe in the sun here at Zanvor. It's our second win and a good comeback. There's a few disappointed faces up and down the pit wall after that one, but not here. They secured a phenomenal victory.
Anthony Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I think the key here was just the quality of Racecroft. I mean, how many overtakes did they make overall? I'm sure we have a stat person keeping score somewhere, and it was fantastic to watch, wasn't it? This is a strategic sport, but it's always really gratifying to see close sport battles on track. It's what all the fans are after. Here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. Four wins in this season for Ferrari. Um, you know, despite the two engine failures and the uh, very, you know, big Ferrari vibes in the last three episodes, you know, secretly, maybe things have changed quite a lot because they've gone from zero wins last season from qualifying on pole so many times, being at the sharp end, but not converting a single one, to now we've got four, the most wins for a single team this season. And this is a first one-two for a long, long time. But for sure, Verstappen's maybe secretly going to be a bit peeved off. It should have been his race win, to be honest. But with the safety car coming in clutch for us, we've stolen that win away from him and got the P1 here at his home race here in Zandvoort. But uh, Alonso, ever the consistent man in the top five, limits the damage, gets a good 10 points on the board for him. Drogovic just ahead of him P4, will only gain two points. Lando Norris does well to get a load of points for Audi today with Sainz down the order after that contact with Verstappen but because of Alonso's consistency and the level of points he had he's still a pretty good 10 points ahead of Verstappen in the championship we're still 19 points back so it's still plenty of work to do but just who knows what the pace will look like for respective teams going to the next couple of races very different circuits to Zandvoort and Austria so we'll see if the momentum will switch and change but for Ferrari and the constructors, we lead the way ahead of Aston Martin and Arava Archer Racing in third place there. Both those teams actually level on points, so very tasty battle there. But for us, for all the dismay that we've had personally in the last three races, things are looking good in the constructors. We now just need to individually solve our own point tally in the Drivers' Championship if we want to try and come back in those standings. But what a day for us. What a day for this team. One, two, can't get better than that. Guys, if you have enjoyed the episode hit the like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're around here then do get subscribed for weekly formula one content i'll see you guys next time goodbye